Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. We like to keep this show, let me say, educational, informative, and fun. The informative part sometimes, we need to warn you that there's things in the water that you can help out with. Education is the key. Doug Hess said the New Zealand mud snails got into his system and it was all hands on deck to clean them up. What is a New Zealand mud snail? First you're going to hear from Doug and then you're going to hear from Brian Nowinski. We performed one of our routine inspections um, for a New Zealand mud snail, which is, which is an aquatic invasive species, and we did find a very small population of the snails in low density here at the hatchery. So we spent our summer and our fall basically disinfecting the hatchery to take uh, measures to mitigate the possibility of us spreading those snails. We don't want to spread those snails ourselves. There's no males in the population. And so it just takes one New Zealand mud snail to found a new population. You just get one girl in, you know, a new stream somewhere, or a new lake or something like that. She'll start having babies and pretty soon you get this kind of a situation right here. There are waters around the state that are sna we know to, ha to have snails or snail positive. And the hatcheries that um, had snails and have, are taking efforts to mitigate the, the spread of those snails, they're actually going to those waters. And the hatcheries that we have inspected that we know are snail negative or don't have snails in, they're, going, they're not going to those waters because we don't want to run the risk of a snail coming back to a facility. The New Zealand mud snail, what is it? Yeah, so this is an invasive snail that from the name, you know, native to New, Zeal New Zealand. Uh, we believe it came here through trade and it's been spread throughout Pennsylvania by fishermen, unfortunately. And it, it's, they're very tiny, they're a few millimeters small um, and they can stick onto waders, onto boots, and unbeknownst to, to, to fishermen, they're getting transferred from one water to another. So they can displace the other natural uh, macroinvertebrates and bugs and stuff that are in the stream. They also could negatively impact the fish. There's been some studies out there that show when the fish eat these things, they don't get the nutritional benefit like some of the natural stuff. So they're, they're not good for the environment. And they're, they're very prolific, then they can overtake a system pretty quickly. How can anglers help? Give me the couple of things that they could do to help out our waterways. I'd say the biggest thing is to go to our website, check out where they are, know that if you're going to a, a stream or a water body that has New Zealand mud snails, we just ask that you take some extra precautions. If you're gonna go, say, to a stream that has them, to a stream that doesn't, you know, what we do is we take our waders after we've been in an area that's positive, we put them in a freezer, in a chest freezer overnight, that kills them. Six hours at freezing temperatures kills them. So if they could take some extra steps to just try not to spread these things around, the biggest thing is education. Know where they are and know where they aren't. So there's always something that you can do as an angler, as a boater, as somebody that just enjoys the waterways you can help out simply by following those couple of steps. There's another critter out there. We've told you about it before, and it's growing and changing places and going from one waterway to the next. You can help stop that too. Sean Hartzell is here to explain what is a rusty crayfish. We caught a rusty crayfish. They have this rusty red spot on their, what's called their cephalothorax right here, the middle part of their body. They're very, very fecund. They have a lot of uh, babies. They can grow to very large sizes, much lo larger than our native crayfish species. They outcompete the native crayfish because they're bigger. They kind of bully them, so to speak. They'll actively actually consume and prey on native crayfish. The native crayfish will disappear uh, very quickly, typically when rusty crayfish come in. Studies have shown that rusty crayfish, when they invade a lake ecosystem, it can lead to smaller bass or smaller walleye because of the broad food web effects that they can have. Folks will collect crayfish as bait and then they'll release the crayfish that are left over. Um, and that's a big problem because it spreads invasive crayfish like the rusty crayfish around. There is no live possession of any species of crayfish unless you are using that crayfish in the water body that you've taken them from immediately. If not, then you need to remove the head behind the eyes to ensure the crayfish is dead. So there you have it. You cannot move them from one waterway to the next. You can pick them. You could do what you want with them. You can kill them like they said, squeezing its head. However, you cannot take it from one spot to another. Help us out. Don't do that. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 